<laughs> Man, I've been out here living like this too long. You haven't got baptized yet. But when you start thinking how you're living you. and you start considering, man, I need to change. Right then, every ungodly component that's in your being, that's true. Satan do everything to elevate it. That's right. Your lust towards everything you hit, everything you hate is affected. That's right. Because Satan wanted to keep us a prisoner to serve him. And then he convinced you, you cannot get right. That's, That's right. a lie. That's a lie. One of the things that have hindered us, we believe the lie that he put in us. Right. We keep falling in the same thing, falling in the same thing, That's falling right. in the same thing. And then Satan said, you see that? What are you going to church for? Ain't no use going to church. Yeah. You ain't going to stop. You ain't going to never get right. And you're like, wow, you know what? I'm not going to get right. Yeah. If Satan is a liar from the beginning, why you believe him? That's right. Why are you so convinced that the devil is correct in what he put in your mind? Yeah. Because you're mentally and emotionally weak and sin is something our flesh loves. That's right. Are you listening? But I see another law in my members. Now, the other law come in your members, that law that is in your members, you're born with that law. Right. What is it doing? Warring against the law of my mind. The law of your mind is a law that you've been exposed to. You're taught the God's law now. That's right. And now the law of God is in your mind because you're thinking about it. You keep in memory what is preached unto you. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. And now that law, which is God's words that I had someone wrote me and said, you know what? Uh, I don't want to be in no church that have do's and don'ts. The Bible don't teach do's and don'ts. Hmm. Man, you's a nut that that's, don't. That, that, if the that, Bible do, is not a book of do's and don'ts, then why are we having so many problems? <laughs> that's right. The Bible speaks plain. That's right. Don't only be a hearer, but be what? A doer. From Genesis to Revelation, do it, boy. the whole book consists of do's and don'ts. That's right. The entire book. That's right. He laid that book after he made man and woman. Yep. He put a law in the garden that consists of do's and don'ts. That's right. <laughs> One tree, as you touch that, don't. Don't. The others, freely eat. Do. Do. That's if you touch it, you'll die. That's right. The whole book itself That's right. is a rule, book a rule book of do's and don'ts. That's right. The modern so-called Christian community, and I've heard them say this, even some of the so-called gospel artists that sang. Mm. They was interviewing Kirk Franklin one day, I believe on The View. And they asked him, what do you think the problem with church is today? And he said, the problem with church today is too many rules. My Lord, my Lord. In church. My Lord. He said, it shouldn't be all these rules. Just let the people wish up God. Wish up is centered around rules Ooh. laid by God how he want to be wished up. In the book of Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 4. You ever heard of no rules? no rules? A church with no rules is not a church. That's right. Listen. Proverbs chapter 4 Even and verse 4. Even the street four. got rules. Oh yes. If you ever was in a gang, every gang got rules. Yeah. A club got rules. You don't believe me? Once that bouncer get a hold of you, you broke somebody's rule. That's right. Even a prostitute got rules. Pay first. <laughs> <laughs> Pay first. What are you talking? That's right. So they don't mind the street having rules. But this has crept in churches oh, yes. where members and even preachers and so-called Christians are saying we should wish up God with no rules. You ain't even that devil got rules. That's right. Let us walk by the same rule. Do you hear the Bible? In the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 16. Hear me world, hear this. 
Nevertheless, where to we have Nevertheless, already attained. Nevertheless, where we have already attained. Let us walk. Let us walk by the same rule. And do what? Let us mind the same thing. I came from the hood. Man, the hood had rules. Oh yeah. When they used the term fair one, hmm. that means the old heads would get two young bloods and let them mix it up. Nobody was allowed to pull out no gun. Nobody was allowed to pull out no straight razor. Nobody was allowed to pull out any blade. Mm -hmm. The old heads, all right, y'all, y'all, young bloods, come on, mix it up. <laughs> we get out there and mix it up. And the old heads stood and watched and make sure it was a fair one, fair. meaning a fair fight. That's right. Nobody was taking out 38s and Glocks and all that stuff, <laughs> turning to the side, shooting you. No. That's right. Best man won. When the fight was over, you went back playing ball. If you think you will serve the Lord as a so-called Christ-like man or woman with no rules, no rules, then the God of heaven you have never served and never will. That's right. In the days of old, he gave rules so strict they were called the Ten Commandments. That's right. Let's read this quickly, son. That's right. Moses was up on a mountain. And, and Moses was up there so long, Israel went up, they was playing and acting like a fool. Yep. But God gave Moses a set of rules. In the book of Exodus chapter 20, we'll start at verse 10. Hear this. But the seventh day is in the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Yes. In it thou shalt not do any work. What? In it thou shalt not do any work. Any, in it. Any, any work. Thou shalt not do. Shall not do any work. That means no natural work. When you observe the Sabbath in the days of old, you couldn't do no natural work. Whether it was cut the grass, pluck ears of corn, milk the cow, you couldn't do no natural work at all. That's right. And we're going to show you the rules in the New Testament once you finish that in the fifth chapter of the book, book of Galatians. Galatians. All right, son. In it thou shalt not do any work. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not know thy son nor wait, thy wait, daughter. Wait, wait, listen at the language of the Bible. Thou, what did it say? In it thou shalt not do thou any work. Thou shalt not, not. Thou shalt not. N O T. There you go. That's the don'ts. That's right. Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not do any work. Don't do any work. Thou. Thou. Nor thy son. Nor thine son. Nor thy daughter. Your daughter. Thy manservant. Your manservant. Nor thy maidservant. And. Nor thy cattle. Your cattle. Nor thy stranger. Don't even let the cattle work. That's right. Make the cattle observe it. That's right. And For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in the midst. Yes. And rested the seventh day. All right. Now down at verse 12. Let's get the commandments here. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor thine father and thy mother. That thy hey, hey, that's a do. Right. First he brought up a don't. That's right. Shall not. Shall not. Now here's a do. Honor thy father and thy mother. Honor your father and mother. That thy days may be long upon the earth. So you can keep living. That thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Yes. Thou shalt not. That now he's back at a not now. That's right. Uh -huh. Thou shalt not kill. Don't kill nobody. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Don't commit adultery with nobody. Thou shalt not steal. Don't steal nothing. Thou that shalt. goes for you that go to the supermarket and walk by that big bin of candy. You just take it at will and just, you see her orange? Hmm. You decide to eat while you shop. That's right. Ain't pay for nothing. Didn't get no receipt. You old undercover thief. That's right. <laughs> You are a thief, I said. That's, that's a thief. We don't look at that as a thief. They say, well, Pastor Jennings, it was a small thing. The Bible said if you can't judge a small matter, how can you judge a large? That's right. Mm -hmm. All right. Thou shalt not steal. You will think again next time you go to the market. Amen. Thou shalt not steal. Anything that don't belong to you when you take it without permission. That's right. You saw them towels in the hotel that you like. Ha, 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 ha. That's right. Hey. Amen. I can't even get my amens out. out. Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. You be like, oh my God, look at the towels in this hotel. They got embroidery on it. Wow, those initials match my name. Oh, the Lord work in mysterious ways. <laughs> you old thief, I said. Amen. The Holy Ghost said. Thou shalt not steal. Amen. I'm pretty sure I got some guilty speaking in tongue folk here. Amen. 
baptized in baptized. the precious name of Jesus Christ. That's right. And as an undercover thief. Thou shalt not steal. You still in Williams? Oh, no. I don't think I don't think You stop? <laughs> oh, fast. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, son, come on. Thou shalt not steal. Do you hear that? Amen. You, you, you lost your Bible. <laughs> and there's a Bible laying around in church. You know it ain't yours. It's not even the same color as yours. That's right. And you're like, mm, the Lord provided. There's a ram in the bush. <laughs> a ram in the bush. <laughs> a ram in the bush. Here you don't stole somebody's Bible. And here they come in. Did y'all see my Bible? Did y'all see my Bible? And they got it like, mm. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. The Holy Ghost said. Thou shalt not steal. These are things that we take lightly. Yeah. But the law says, thou shalt thou not steal. Shall not steal. Thou shalt not steal. I don't care how small that thing is. That's right. If it's not yours. Pastor Jenna, what about? Don't ask me what about nothing. If it come under stealing and it's not yours, don't do it. That's right. Maybe I am guilty, Pastor. <laughs> it ain't no maybe. You know whether you're guilty or not. Glory to God. You see, he tried to leave a way out for himself. <laughs> maybe I am guilty. That's the devil out of hell. All right, come on, Williams. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. What? Thou shalt not bear false witness you, against thy neighbor. If you know you was not there to witness a thing, don't lie and bear false witness and falsely accuse somebody with somebody else and right. get all together in a fake accusation. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's written, speak what you know and testify to what you see. That's right. And make sure what you see is what you're looking at. Amen. All right, son. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. What? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. You prosperity preachers that are watching, this goes for you. Oh, yes. You going around telling your members to go to people's houses and touch them and claim them. That's right. I was in Alabama years ago on a radio talk program. And uh, it was a call-in show, and they had the people around the city calling in, asking me questions. And, uh, and then the next day, I listened at the show. I wasn't in the studio. And they was calling in, asking the DJ questions, who's supposed to be in the preacher. And the woman called in and said, there's a house that she wanted, and she believed God for it. And uh, so the man told her, why don't you just go touch and claim it? Right. He, she told <laughs> the fake preacher, she said, but people live in the house. He asked her, how bad do you want the house? <laughs> she said, I want it real bad. She, uh, he said, uh, then go claim it. She said, but there's a fence. He said, hop the fence mm. and touch the house. My Lord. These men are make a fool out of you, God knows. That's right. Now, anytime the preacher is telling you touch and claim, a house or a car, and the car is somebody else's, and the house is somebody else's, and you acting that out, that's not faith, that's covetousness. Yes. Because you are desiring what don't belong to you. That's right. Are you listening? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Don't covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Don't even covet thine, what? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Do you hear that? Amen. Don't covet your neighbor's wife. wife. That's wife. one of them don't do. That's right. And thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. What else? Nor his manservant, nor his maidservant. What else? Nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything. That means don't covet nothing that belonged to them. That is thy neighbor's. Anything. Don't desire their husband. Don't desire their wife. Don't desire their car. Don't desire their position at the job. That's right. Until you lie and scheme and get them fired and you get their position. That's right. That's covetous practice. That's covetous. And you will reap what you sow. That's right. All right. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Wait a minute. In Exodus chapter 20. Wait a verse minute. Seven, thou shalt not. Now here's one of those don'ts. That's right. That's right. Thou shalt not take the take name of the Lord the thy God in vain. Of the Lord thy God in vain. And a man see a woman, he shouldn't be saying, Jesus. <laughs> That's right. You're using that name in vain. In vain. That's right. Mm. Amen. Amen. I may as well say amen to myself. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Thank God my men is dead now. <laughs> amen. That's right. You see a woman, I don't care if she got so much curves, she outdo all the road of the Netherlands. Mm. 
You should look at that woman. Jesus. Amen. Woman should look at that man. Mm, mm, mm. My Lord, he's coming back for us in the cloud. That's right. What did the coming of the Lord got to do with that fella? That's right. Other than nothing? Nothing. Don't do what? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So his name or his title should not be attached to your curse words. That's right. Did you hear me? That's right. His name or his title should not be attached to your curse words. Amen. Amen. Did you hear the Bible talking? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. What do God and MF got in common? That's right. Go ahead, man. Amen. Amen. From the same mouth, proceeding blessings and cursing. And cursing. And cursing. Hear me good now. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. What else? For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Do you hear that? Amen. Or attack God, every judge and every preacher and every politician that performs saying sex marriages and his last words are, and he quote the scripture to two men or two women get married. Right. Whom the Lord hath joined together. That's right. Let not man put a son up. He's using it in vain. In vain. That's why Jesus said, in vain do they wish of me, teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. That's right. It's in vain. In vain. Do you hear this? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Don't joke with the Lord's name. That's right. Go ahead, man. Don't take it in vain. In vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless. He will not hold you guiltless. That taketh his name in vain. His name is too great, too strong, too precious, too valuable, too powerful for you to play with it. That's right. That's right. With his name, death can come. Oh, yes. With his name, victory can come. That's right. With his name, life will come. Yeah. Over to God, when David loaded up that sling, what did he say when he came to Goliath? I come. I come. In the name of the Lord. Of the Lord. Thank God. Hallelujah. When he released that stone and they hit the giant in the head, the giant fell. That's right. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the rackets run in it and are saved. Amen. And you sinners out there watching. Amen. Listening at these blind devil deceived celebrities. Yeah. Saying that a church should be no rules. No rules. The truth of God, people done hijacked the broadcast and got it on so many media platforms until I don't even know what it is. Amen. There was a group podcast and the fella said, we're going, we our subject today is Pastor Jennings. Wow. The first time I saw these fellas, he said, it's Pastor Jennings spoke against a preacher named Jamal Bryant, my cousin. Mm. He went and apologized to the homosexual community for all black preachers. Mm. In America. And I got over there and blast them back to the lake of fire. <laughs> That's right. And told him, you ain't apologizing for me. That's right. And as they were discussing the fellas, and of course, some fellas, though I'm too radical, and unloving. <laughs> but uh, the truth of the matter is this. We're living in a time where people want to go to church. But not a Bible church. That's right. They want to go to a building that got a steeple and a cross and hear a group of people saying about Jesus, love me for this, I know, because the Bible tells me so. Feel good and warm from a choir singing. That's right. And then let someone who poses as a preacher get up and give them a little motivational sermon to, you know, give sugar to their next door neighbor. Help your neighbor change the oil in their car. Help an old lady right. go across the street. Help them. All that little stuff. Little Never, Never have anything to do with bowing down and submitting to the will of Jehovah himself. That's right. Never. Never. In America, they're going to church. Oh, yeah. But even the preachers are saying, we're going to get rid of all rules in church. Oh, yes. Members are getting up clapping, happy. That's right. This is spreading around the world. That's right. Why is it doing this? That's right. They're like Israel was when Moses was on the mountain. Yeah. The word of God say how Israel rose up to play right. and dance. That's right. Let's read that. In the book of Exodus chapter 32. Follow me in the Bible. Exodus chapter 32 will start at verse 
5. Come on, son. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. Yeah. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. Uh -huh. And they rose up early on the morrow and offered burnt offerings. Yes. And brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink yes and rose up to play they rose up to play rose up to play read on and the lord said unto moses go get thee down go get down for thy people which thou brought us out of the land of egypt have corrupted themselves they did what they have corrupted themselves and that's exactly what have happened to america europe africa the asiatic community everything everything down at verse 19 that's what and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp as soon as he came nigh to the camp that he saw the calf and what and the dance what was God remember Israel was God's people that's right they was in a backsliding stage here that's right the thing that kept them in order was the instructions of God but the Moses the leader the overseer was away giving the commandments to better the people that's right while he was away, my God, look how the people changed on him. And it came to pass, as soon as he came nigh unto the as camp. As soon as he got close to the camp. That he saw the calf. He saw the idol. And the dancing. I told you dancing is a sin. Mm. Go ahead, man. Go ahead, I told you dancing is a sin. That's right. And you sin about there Go dancing ahead. is a sin. And it, in Exodus chapter 32 and verse 19. Read your Bible. And I preached against pass. this and so many got on social media. There ain't no Bible that says dancing is wrong. Right. And one movie director and producer, I cannot think of their name. They put out a movie in the uh, 90s, I believe it was, Let's Dance. Yeah. And the church, well, the preachers and the churches supposed to rebel against the dancing. Right. And the star went and got the Bible in the movie where David danced right. and read that scripture. And then the preacher was dumbfounded and didn't know what to do to one that was acting as a preacher. And he went on and allowed him to have a party in the church. It shows you how the devil even used scripture to motivate, motivate. his agenda. And only the ignorant believed in his usage of it. That's right. But when God opened up your understanding, That's right. there's dancing in the spirit and there's dancing in sin. In sin. Amen. In Exodus chapter 32 and verse 19. Listen. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp. When Moses, the man of God, got close to the camp. That he saw the calf. He saw the idol. And the dancing. And the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. No, he was pleased with it. Moses' anger waxed hot. He popped his finger. Moses' anger waxed hot. He said, let me get a part and dance with him. Moses' anger waxed hot. No, he got his steps in too. Moses' anger waxed hot. Moses said, let's groove. A little. Moses' anger waxed hot. Moses said, here we go. Come on. Come on. And Moses' anger waxed hot. Moses got angry with it. And Why do your preacher love it? Go ahead. I know world a church can sponsor a neighborhood party in church. Go ahead, man. Dancing in the world is a sin. That's right. You and have these fake Christian videos by sinners who pose as Christians. They all dancing on the video. Dancing. They twerking on the video. That's right. They got half naked so-called church going girls with hot pants shaking their behind That's right. for Jesus. That's right. You shaking your behind for Bell. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. In Exodus chapter 32. It's a mockery. That's right. That's right. You that's always logging on quick to say what well, I don't have Bible for, I advise you to listen first. Listen Retaliate first. Retaliate later. Exodus chapter 32 and verse 19. You dancing hypocrite. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp. Look at Moses, God's man, God's prophet. As soon as he came nigh unto the camp. As he got close to the camp. That he saw the camp. He saw the idol that Israel built. And the dancing. And the dancing. And how did that Make Moses respond. And Moses' anger waxed hot. Got angry. That's what I right. imagine me coming back That's right. from a European tour, then go to Africa, African countries, away from America, a month, month and a half. Yes. And then get back a little bit earlier than what people expected. That's go right. in headquarters and it's packed yeah, from front to back. Amen. Choir mm. up singing. And I walk in and they up singing. Mm. 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 My Lord. I'm walking in. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I'm going to interrupt everything. What do you think you do? That's right. 
I don't care if I'm all covered with dirt from the trip. That's <laughs> right. Come in looking like pig pen. Smoke <laughs> all over me. What are you doing? Amen. How did God house get so cheap? That's right. That now it became a place of entertainment and clubbing. Amen. The Bible said you can't get sweet and bitter water from the same fountain. Either it's God's church or Satan's church. That's it can't right. be both. That's right. It cannot be both. That's right. In Exodus chapter 32, we'll start at verse 17. Follow me. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people. Glory to God. When Joshua heard the noise of the people. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted. As they shouted. Hold it. Mm. When it says as they shouted, that don't mean doing this. No. No. You shout with your mouth, you dance with your feet. That's right. As they shouted, that was the noise. That's right. Uh -huh. He said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. <laughs> it was so messed up. Because where there's war, there's confusion. Confusion. So when he said there's a noise of war in the camp, that means there's confusion in the camp. And he said, it is not Everything is out of order. That's it. Church now is out of order. That's right. There's a noise. There is a noise of war, war. in the camp. In the camp. And he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery. It is not the voice of them that shout for order. Neither is it the voice of neither them that it, cry. Neither is it the voice of them that cry. For being overcome. For being, what you mean? Moses, this is not the same people that God delivered. That's right. They cry change. Their voice change. That's they right. love change. Now, they don't have the love of God like they used to. That's right. They don't appreciate God, what he done for them. Amen. And many of you watching are the same way. Amen. You've been in some church that has some discipline and you've been away from that stuff so long for so many years. And here God sent us the Bible pit bull preacher. <laughs> That's right. You've been away from hard preaching for years. For years. And some devil got in the pulpit and licked you like a little kitten. Amen. And here I come along sinking the teeth in the Bible back to you. That's right. And they're like, oh, Lord, oh, oh, no, no, not that again. No. Not that again. No, 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 no. No, he's the devil. The devil sent him. He's an antichrist. <laughs> That's right. That's One right. woman told me, I refuse to go back in that type of bondage preaching. Mm. And she was in her 70s. My Lord, my Lord. Told me to my face. Came to one of the meetings. <laughs> Pastor Jennings, I just wanted to meet you face to face. I said, yes, ma'am. Thank you uh, for being here. She said, I just want to tell you, I refuse to be in this type of bondage preaching. Oh, Lord, my I Lord. said, bondage preaching? She said, yes, you, I can't do nothing in your church. I said, it's not my church. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church. My church. It's not Geno Jennings' church. Right. She said, well, I came out of a church like that, and now I'm happy with Jesus. <laughs> I said, you happy with Jesus? I said, but what are you doing? What kind of church you go to? She said, I serve Jesus at home. I drank a little, I smoke whenever I want, and I party whenever I please. I said, ma'am, no disrespect. How old are you? I'm 77. Wow. I said, you have a good day when you go to hell. <laughs> I told her, you have a good day when you go to hell. <laughs> I get my greatest fight from the so-called Christian. That's right. That's right. I get more fight out of so-called church people than the sinners who don't know Jesus. Yeah. Many other sinners say, I respect that man. The day I make it up my mind to get it right, I'm going to him. Yeah. These sinners know this little weak stuff can't keep them. Yeah. They need something hard. If you've been out there living a hard, rough life, you need a hard preaching to keep you in check. Amen. <laughs> that little sugar stuff don't do nothing for you. You can go to all the Bible colleges and learn the wisdom of men all you want. All you the want. wisdom of men will not lead you to with the wisdom of God. No. Look at what happened here. And he said, it is not the voice it of them that not shout for masters. the voice of them that shout for masters. Neither is it Neither. the voice of them that cry for being overcome. the voice of them that cry for being overcome. For being overcome. But the noise of them that sing Wait do a minute. I hear. The noise of them that do what? But the noise of them that sing. Do I hear? I told you God don't recognize all kind of singing. No. He don't recognize all kind of singing. Listen, they sung and they danced. That's right. And you know what it all came under? They rose up to play. Rose up to play. They were playing, yet they were singing, yet they were dancing. And dancing. But it came under the category Rose up play. to play. Play. 
Playing church. Playing That's exactly church. what the world is doing now. That's right. Anybody call themselves a Christian. Anybody. Right. anybody. Oprah called herself a Christian. <laughs> I think Dr. Phil called himself a Christian. Mm. Kirk Franklin called himself a Christian. That's the right. whole community, Snoop Dogg made a so-called Christian record. A so-called Christian artist got Snoop Dogg to rap on his record. Rap on his Before you know it, the whole entertainment industry said Snoop Dogg is now a Christian. My Lord. They don't even know what being like Christ is. No. When you talk about being like Christ, brother, that's a life different from the life you normally would use. Oh, yes. Listen. But the noise of them that do sing do I hear. And, and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp. As soon as he got close to the camp. That he saw he the camp. saw the idol. And the dancing. And the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. I don't care if you and your husband baptized and have the Holy Ghost. You ain't got no business playing some worldly music on some honeymoon and y'all doing your dance that you haven't done in over 30 years. That's right. Slow dragging with your husband. That's right. <laughs> Are you listening? Amen. Well, Pastor Jenner, we're in the privacy of our own home. Uh-huh. You sinning, but in the dark. Right in, that's, that's all right. you're doing. The Bible said, what's done in the dark it'll come to the light. Come to the light. It is written, darkness and light is equal to him. That's He'll right. see you in the dark just as much as he see you in the light. That's right. That's true. I remember years ago on Frankfurt Avenue, a brother asked me, Pastor Jennings, I know it's wrong to be out there dancing like the world. He said, but if, how about if I dance in the privacy of my own home? <laughs> I said, what make it so private? God see you. <laughs> That's right. He said, yeah, I didn't think of that. <laughs> It ain't all that private. No. Amen. Come on, son. Give me a few more verses. Let's get back to the foundation so we can, amen, bring this to an end. Come and on now. It, and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp that he saw the calf. Yes. And the dancing. And Moses asked I want you heart. that are listening around the world, ask yourself, what happened to your church? Look at the way they're singing. Look at the so-called songs that's being sung now. Right. You don't know whether to slow drag to it, make so-called love to some woman to it, whether to shout to it, whether to speak in tongue to it, or, or try to do all of it at once. That's right. That's why the entertainment industry is an industry led by the devil himself. Yes, it is. Yes, holy it is. sanctified music supposed to be holy sanctified music. Oh, yes. I shouldn't have to be betwixt trying to decide, wow, should I dance to it? Should I pop my finger to it or should I shout to it? That's right. That's right. And that's what the entertainment industry are doing now. They're making the type of records, music, where it can be played on both sides of the fence. Yeah. It used to be a song, I, thunk, I think it was sung by the whinings. How does it feel to be loved? Yeah. How does it feel to be loved? When you get married, you ain't walking down the aisle on some sinner singing, some love song. No way. No. No. God said, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. That means my house is sanctified for what I want. That's right. And God's house should not be changed into something else. Amen.